Hello everyone, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Evania Yafi I'm lecturer in Universitas Negeri Malang And now I'm PhD student in UTM Malaysia My field is early childhood education I'm very interested in this seminar Because I can share knowledge with others And I will show in the first, the first session On 8 July 2020 See you there Good afternoon and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh for all our dear participants and the keynote, keynote, keynote speakers in the international webinar. Um, this is me, Muhammad Kadura. I'm a, I'm a PhD candidate student in UTM University, Malaysia, in TESEL program. Uh, so, inshallah, I will share my experience and my knowledge with all our dear lecturers and uh, teachers in the, in the international webinar tomorrow morning, I think, 8 a.m. So, wait me there and wait all of us to share and to exchange the um, knowledge and experience between all of us. It will be a happy day and a shiny day for all of us. Thank you so much. See you soon, inshallah, dear. Buongiorno, salamat pagi. Nama saya Ilaria Javarini. Thank you very much to my friend Evania. I really appreciated this invitation to this webinar. I am a speech language therapist. In Indonesian, it will be therapist bichara. I don't speak Indonesian, but I learned just a few words for this event. I live in Milan, in the north of Italy. I attended classical studies and uh, at in, attended a bachelor degree in speech and language therapy in the University of Milan. Right now, I'm working with children with learning disabilities and speech disorders. I'm attending a postgraduate course in learning disabilities and speech and language uh, disorders. And I'm really happy to um, to be part of this webinar. On the 8th of July, I'm going to show my presentation, which title is Protective and Risk Factors for Language Development Delay. Thank you very much in advance. Bye. Hello everyone, I'm Sun Qi Huang from Hebei Normal University, China. My major is in English teaching. Currently, I'm reading PhD in curriculum and instruction in University of Technology Malaysia for one year. It's a real honor to have an opportunity to share my ideas and thoughts on curriculum based on distance learning in coronavirus disease era. Thanks for listening, and please feel free to give any suggestions. Good morning, and thank you for having me here with you today. My name is Nariko Samson Venatius. I am from Nigerian. My area of specialization is technical education. I will be featuring in the second section of this seminar, which is slated for the 11th day of July 2020. The seminar promises to be educative. You are duly invited. Please make it a date with us. God bless you until we meet on that day. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nilu Sakina Aini. I'm from Primary Education, Universitas Negeri Malang.
Good day, everyone. Hi. My name is Olushala Fadumiye. This is Lokwe Olufunke. My friends called me Mary. Oh, they shortened my name to Titi. So some call me Titi. Why some call me Mary? Because I have a long name. Um, I come from Nigeria and study my PhD in um, University Technology Malaysia, that's UTM. I'm from the, the Faculty of Education and um, my field is in Educational Technology. I uh, really want to appreciate um, my colleague Eva for bringing up this higher club um, program, you know, uniting us together, coming together to talk on different topics given unto us. So I'll be featuring uh, the 14th of July. So I'll be expecting everyone to be there. Thank you. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Hello everyone, my name is Taufik Ihsan Sulamet. I am a faculty member in the Department of Educational Technology, School of Education, Universitas Negeri Balang. I am now also a PhD student in the Department of Instructional Systems Technology, School of Education, Indiana University, Bloomington, United States. I'm happy to join in the seminar and then I will see you in the third session of the seminar. 14 of July 2020. See you there. Hello, this is Manal Ali, English language literature and PhD student in UTM University, Malaysia in educational technology specialization. I would like to welcome everybody here today education department of in Malang University. My colleagues from different parts of the world who are joined in this international region, all the participants uh, who are interested in this uh, webinar. I am pleased to be with you on the 16th of July with my colleagues. We will discuss the topic about learning based technology uh, in COVID 19 era i hope you are interested and join us in all sessions thank you so much assalamualaikum wabarakatuh myself Roshi Damayani. i'm coming from indonesia uh, for i'm lecturer in state university of malang uh, my research field is in early childhood education, especially in multiple intelligence. And I will show in international webinar in session four. I think it's enough. Uh, nice to meet you and see you later. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum everyone. Hope all of you are fine with good health. I'm Anwar Saleh. I'm from Jordan. I'm a PhD in University of Technology Malaysia. And my major is measurement and evaluation. Hope I can see you in our session in July. Inshallah. Bye bye. Hello everyone. My name is Yudha Alfian, uh, Vice Director of Sangar Corp, the best educational company. See you in the last session in 17 July 2020. Hello, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second session of the webinar series, Educational Revolution. We've just watched together the CD from all the key speakers. Selamat datang, Bapak Ibu, peserta webinar saya ini, Educational Revolution, yang penandarkan oleh Fakultas Ilmu Pendidikan dan juga kerjasama dengan Sanggar Corp. Ini adalah seri yang kedua dan tadi merupakan tayangan CV dari semua keynote speaker kita yang akan berbagi informasi untuk di sesi ketiga lagi dan juga ada di sesi yang 
keempat. Oke. Okay. Well, back again with me. My name is Puri Selfie and I am your moderator for this session. I work at the Department of the Primary School Teacher Education in the Faculty of Education, Universitas Negeri Malang. And it is my pleasure to welcome all of you here in this webinar again. Okay. Well, I have to make sure that all of you uh, have the uh, internet connection is good or not. And if you if you can see and hear us well, please raise a hand. Okay. I think everyone is good right now. Okay. Well, without, before we start our webinar, I would like to give uh, some information to you. Uh, actually, this, this webinar service will be held in four sections. And today is the second session. But if you miss the first session, you just can go to the UM YouTube channel and there go, you can watch our, our first session. And the third session will be held in the 14th of July and the last session will be held in the 17th of July with different themes in each section. So you can also watch this webinar live from Rosevania channel. Uh, I, will be, I will share link later on and you can talk to us during the webinar or asking questions during the presentation. Just write them via chat, even it is via Zoom or WhatsApp group. It's okay. And yeah, we will have a three keynote speakers today and we have only 20 minutes uh, for Q&A sessions. And I hope that we can answer all of you or your questions today. I will also speak in Bahasa Indonesia to sum up a little bit just in the last session, just to make sure that all of you get the right point where whenever uh, which uh, everyone that's talking about right now. All right, everyone is good. Now I will introduce our topic today and our keynote speakers. Today, we are gonna discuss about learning strategies in COVID era. And the first speaker is Mr. Sun Kihua, uh, but he preferred to be called Nick. Hello, Nick. Are you okay if I call you Nick? <laughs> okay. And the second sp speaker is Mr. Arikpo. And the third speaker is Mrs. Nilu Sakina. Okay. Well, without further ado, well, we are connecting to the first speaker. Nick? Hello, Nick? Are you there? Can you hear me? Okay. I will talk a little bit about his background. He is a candidate PhD of School of Education, University of Technology, Malaysia, or UCM. And his field of research is curriculum and instruction. And he has been working as EFL teacher in Waipei Normal University. And he will be talking about curriculum based on distance learning in COVID era. Nick, Nick, hello. Okay, Nick. hello. Okay. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I can hear. Okay, Nick. Okay. Now okay. it's my time. There you go. Yeah. yeah, this is your time. Okay. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you. Well, I'm very honored to share my ideas about uh, curriculum based on distance learning in uh, coronavirus uh, era. Now I show my PPT here. Okay. Everyone, okay. Uh, hello, can you see it? Okay, hello. Great. Yeah, hello. Hello. Yeah. Can see yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see that. Yeah. You can Everyone can see my PPT here. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, uh, I'm very honored to share my ideas about that, and uh, and uh, thank you for the opportunities to to learn together about. Uh, about uh, you're yeah, talking about the topic yeah, curriculum. So in the title, there are two keywords. Yeah, in, a, in the title, there are two keywords. The first one is uh, distance learning and the second one is the curriculum. So first, let's come to the first one. Here, yeah, yeah. what is the distance uh, yeah, learning? Maybe 
uh, I want to borrow borrow others' yeah, definition about that. Yeah, it, it is referred to it symbols on the separation of a teacher and learning in, in space or time, the volitional control of learning by learners rather than the distance instructor and now a journey communication between the learner and the teacher uh, mediated by print or some form of uh, technology. Yeah, that is means yeah, learners can ask the teacher questions by phone, email, or chat room. And yeah, that's the difference from the traditional learning way. So, okay. And um, there is a very big Nick, advantage. Nick. Hello. Hello. Nick. Yeah. Can you uh, make it the slideshow? What? That's a bit bigger. Make it a slideshow. Okay. Just a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Because the I'm font sorry. is a bit, uh, yeah, a little, little bit. And we, can, we cannot see that clearly. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Better, better. Okay. That's Thank better. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. It's a big premise, okay? Because uh, yeah, yeah, the convenience of a time and space, learners do not have to physically be with the instructor in space and time. Yeah, that depends on the method used and they do not have to be together in time as well. This is a great advantage for non-traditional students who cannot attend regular times. So yeah, that is part of one, yeah, the keywords, just need the learning and uh, then we come to the uh, curriculum. Well, everybody knows if we want to design the curriculum and we have to consider the theories or philosophies which uh, lies behind your curriculum. So here, uh, I introduce uh, two philosophies for our designing curriculum. Um, yeah, based on distance learning. The first one is the information processing approach. And the second one is the constructiveness uh, principles. So let's uh, talk about uh, use information processing approach briefly. Well, it uh, tell us to design curri uh, curricula uh, about how learners notice, they select and receive information and then after that, we should, uh, uh, we should uh, encode and uh, internal, uh, internalize and organize the information you receive. It's uh, like uh, the computers, okay? And uh, the second one is uh, constructivist, uh, constructivist uh, principles. Well, maybe you are familiar with it and uh, uh, learners, yeah, yeah, learners may have uh, different ideas or thoughts about the same phenomenon, uh, about the same phenomenon, or the same uh, new things, or the new or the same practice, and they will get uh, get the knowledge, or or they will construct their knowledge from the original experience, because different people have a different experience about the same uh, practice. So, and I think uh, yeah, they are very important for us to design. Curricula, yeah, that's the second key words, and then there are three three important elements before we we design the curricula. Well, the first one is uh, the teacher's role, and everybody knows, yeah, because we do not need to be present at the classroom. We just use uh, use the online way to instruct. So, and uh, there are two rules for us to consider. Uh, we are instructor or we are facilitator. Okay, hello everyone, can you hear me? Hello? 
Yeah. 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 Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. We can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay. We can hear you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. It's a bit silent. Okay, I'm sorry. Line, yeah. Yeah. Yes, doctor. Uh, teachers. Uh, yeah. And I think yeah, teachers are no longer the only source of uh, of knowledge, and uh, teachers are not only knowledge transmitter. We shouldn't. We shouldn't be knowledge transmitter, and we should consider the uh, the the learners' needs in our class, and then the second maybe uh, now in modern in modern educational psychology and the teachers uh, are are tending to use uh, tending to be for for city theater because because the learners have uh, their own learning needs. And uh, they have different learning styles, and so we should uh, we should be helpers who help them help them to learn, to learn to be, to learn to learn, and uh, they, and uh, learners should be independent, and they have uh, to be and they have to cultivate their autonomy and their independence and uh, their metacognition. So I think for us, city theater is more useful, but uh, and uh, different, uh, based on different uh, your, your teaching goals, and you can choose the teacher's role here. Okay, uh, it's the element one. I'll come to the element uh, two. It's a curriculum design considerations. And uh, there are very small key points here. The first one, the uh, interactivity. Everybody knows uh, learning shouldn't be one way and uh, two ways, okay, two ways, okay. And the uh, students should learn very actively. So yeah, active learning is uh, the crucial crucial element in our, in our teaching here, yeah. Into, Activity, and the second one is active learning and inquiry learning, and and here I want to emphasize is inquiry learning. Uh, students are not uh, passive learners, and they should uh, uh, try their best to think and to talk about and to recall their experience and find out the answers, find the solution to the problems, uh, not the the answer the teacher just uh, yeah, tell them. And the second one is the visual imagery. And so as uh, now we use the yeah, online way here, your yeah, visual yeah, imagery. And here I'm, I'm, I want to emphasize the PPT, okay, yeah, the course we are making. We do not need to make it very, very perfect. It just, uh, and I think briefness, brief and clear, and make sure your PPT effective. Yeah, that is okay, I think. And the first one is effective communication. Everybody, maybe your learners, uh, when they are online learning, maybe uh, some students want to talk about uh, nonsense. I don't think it's okay. And and uh, is, and the teachers uh, should uh, should not uh, allow your learners to talk uh, about uh, something nonsense. Uh, they shouldn't gossip. Uh, yes, okay. And the last one is teamwork and our personal um, and the uh, students should learn learn together and yeah, because of uh, their interaction. So uh, they have to do some yeah, teamwork or pair work, uh, group work is okay here. So now let's come to the key points of uh, our session here. Yeah. The yeah, steps of a curriculum based on distance learning in coronavirus era. Yeah, there are many, many steps, I think. The first one, one A, plan. We should draw a plan before we, before we teach, before we make curriculum design. And uh, in a plan includes yeah, yeah, four points. The point one is uh, identifying the instruction goal. So, so here, and what do you to do or where do you want to go here? You are teaching or you are training. And of course, as uh, for us, maybe, and we are teaching, yeah, we, yeah, we choose yeah, teaching. So we, so today we, 
we will talk about more about teaching here. And the second one, what curriculum resources do you need? Everybody knows because of uh, internet resources, there are so many resources. Maybe you will be puzzled about uh, those resources. And so we should uh, make clear, make clear ty types of resources. And what resources you can get, you can get. And the second one, your capital. When you get to these resources, and do you need to pay some money? And you should consider yeah, your money. And the last one is where exactly it is used. Yeah, that means, yeah, that means you know which part of your teaching and uh, you will use the very useful resources. Yeah, yeah, and here it means yeah, teaching materials, yeah, the teaching materials, you you know which part you'd like to use. I come to your point three. What resources are available to you? Yeah, so maybe uh, uh, resources and uh, if you are a teacher or you are a lecturer, maybe your school, your school, your school have a right to get access to the resources you are lucky. But uh, if you are not uh, available, this maybe you have to to purchase on the internet. Yes. Now come to point four. How do you arrange your time? How many minutes do you plan to teach your students? How many minutes? And uh, how many minutes will you give your students to talk, to, to discuss? So uh, that's the factors you have to consider when you are teaching. Okay, it's uh, a yeah, step 1A, now come to 1B, okay? Curriculum development kit, team. Yeah, everybody knows if uh, only teacher designs uh, his course or curriculum, Maybe it's maybe the curriculum the curriculum design you get is not is not the best one, and you can do it better if you do it in your group. So here your planner planner should uh, should consider uh, how many how many teachers or how many colleagues how many lecturers you want to you want to join, and here yeah in your team your team different. Uh, lecturers or, or different teachers they play different roles and so here in a team maybe your leader yeah someone is a leader and someone is a coordinator or someone is a uh, is instructor maybe yeah uh, someone is uh, yeah whose task is to is to play your video to play your ppt or help you to make ppt yeah so yeah, totally yeah, different uh, different members in your team they play different roles. So we have so we have to consider it very carefully. Uh, or we or we cannot uh, perform perform our duty smoothly. Okay, that is uh, step one. Now come to step two to a learner analysis. Yes, that's a very important. Um, we should design our curriculum. We should, uh, we should design uh, teaching procedures based on learners. Yeah, that's uh, the knowledge uh, yeah, we are familiar with. The first one is uh, your students' uh, needs assessment. So design the learning status and minors correct uh, learning status. Yeah, that is gap. Maybe uh, we are familiar with the theory. The theory is, uh, Zoom of uh, proximal development. Yeah, the so if if uh, our uh, if our learning objective is uh, too high, students may not achieve it. But uh, if our learning learning objective is very low, maybe students will not be interested in your in your teaching. So we have to. Uh, we have to put uh, our learning, our learning objectives based on students' needs. So before we teach, and we can make a small uh, questionnaire to get information about their needs. So yeah, do you think so? Uh -huh. Okay. 
Now I come to point two, analysis of learner characteristics. So learner characteristics, oh, uh, there are many, many uh, learner char uh, characteristics, but uh, there are some uh, important I want to introduce. The first one is the uh, learning styles. They are learning styles and uh, different learners. Maybe they get the information or knowledge. Uh, we'll use different uh, styles. Someone like, uh, like to watch, yeah, watch, or someone like listening, or someone likes uh, learning at the night, or they like to stay up late. Maybe yeah, some of the students are like that. Okay. And uh, the second uh, yeah, characteristic is uh, is the knowledge structure, students' knowledge structure. Maybe yeah, students, they have their cognition. Yeah, cognition. So yeah, yeah, the second point. I come to three here is the uh, learning uh, yeah, learning attitudes. Your yeah, students have different attitudes towards towards your knowledge you want you want to teach. So we should know their attitudes or their opinions about uh, about the teaching content here. And the last one I want to introduce is uh, motivation. Motivation maybe is the decisive factor, which which will have uh, a very very important impact on the uh, learning outcomes. Yeah, uh, I think so. I think we should uh, we should know know learners' characteristics. That's that's very important. Okay. It's a two A. Now come to two B. Uh, curriculum resources analysis. Okay. I think it's a very necessary for us to learn together here. Yeah, number one is the learning content analysis, and uh, we should see select learning con content, and uh, we have to consider many factors about their scope. Scope. We shouldn't. Uh, we should uh, get the learning content from a very wide, uh, wide uh, uh, width to a narrow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we should narrow our learning content. Understand the depth. Depth shouldn't be very easy or shouldn't be very, very difficult. And that is the learning content arrangement and how to, yeah, yeah. I mean, we should put our learning content uh, yeah, in order from uh, the easy level to the difficult level here. Okay, now comes to number two, learning support condition. Maybe you learn support condition here. Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, you are very familiar with it, but uh, here I want to emphasize it again, because your learning support condition, it uh, will have uh, an impact on our, on learners, on learners learning yeah, outcomes here. And learners um, support condition can be divided into three kinds. Three kinds. Yeah, kind of one is the management and learning support. Management, learning support here. Uh, so here I want to I want to insert uh, why I'm a, I'm a very sorry I, I didn't uh, top down yeah, these words, I'm very sorry for that. Please forgive me. So I just uh, uh, talk about it yeah, with you here. So here, learning support condition one is the management learning support, management learning support. And the second one is academic learning support, academic. Yeah, we should make clear, make clear academic learning condition. And the second one, emotional learning support. So yeah, three kinds of uh, learning support condition. Which one can we support? Which one can we provide? Provide with our students. Okay, now I repeat here, management learning support. The second one is academic learning support. And the third one is emotional support, yeah, learning support condition. So we should con consider which one, which one, can we provide, can we offer to our students? So here, and of course, I will give some examples 
below. There are some examples below. Okay, back on to your point of three, curriculum material analysis. And uh, yeah, just now uh, we have talked about some, but here we just know okay, how to use existing materials. Of course, and uh, it's uh, a little the same uh, to the to the information uh, we talk about uh, in in PPT in PPT ten uh, ten and nine. Yeah, okay. I guess yeah, we are well familiar with it. Now, let's come to your step three. Yeah, step three, yeah, three. Yeah. So that's the very specific step for us to teach. Yeah. Here, the first one, yeah, instruct the plan. Yeah, yeah. Number one, interpret instruction goals. I think it's necessary for instructor or facilitator to tell students our goals, our objectives. And here, I don't use the purpose and I don't use the uh, aims because aims or purpose is a uh, uh, wide, not the specific. We just make instructional objectives. Depending on depend on our session, depending on our teaching. Yeah, this yeah yeah this session. So here we should uh, be clear about that. We shouldn't make our goals uh, very wide, uh, very very harsh. We should be very specific, very clear, very small maybe. And uh, the second one, teaching arrangement. Here, uh, number one, teaching proper of the yeah, other course. Uh, yes, yeah, instructors should have the teaching purpose is, um, yeah, yeah, that it means the learning objectives of the whole unit, the whole unit, okay, unit here, okay, the whole unit, and then the class period. And uh, if we want to finish this unit, and um, so how many class periods or how many sessions do we need? So we should uh, consider that. It's about 3A. Now come to 3B. How to develop. And we have uh, should know some ways, specific ways or, or very specific uh, uh, strategies. Um, I, I saw uh, some small yeah, teaching strategies yeah, like uh, presentation, and yeah, maybe we often use, and then yeah, demonstration, demonstrate how to do, uh, how to perform, and then the drill, and do some exercise and practice. And after that, and the tutorials, because uh, yeah, some students uh, cannot follow you yeah, because of uh, your intonation and uh, your speed or, or the teaching contact, uh, it's very difficult. So we can give uh, some yeah, tutorials. And of course, and um, in our activity of uh, teaching, we can use the gaps little playing and a discussion or uh, brainstorming is okay here. And uh, of course, after teaching and uh, your students can email, uh, mailing list, uh, newspaper, yeah, news groups, interaction, modeling, facilitation and uh, yeah, uh, collaboration. But here, here I want to, uh, I want to add more I want to add more. Yeah, the first one. The first one is the induction. Okay, yeah, maybe everyone yeah know the word. Yeah, induction. Induction and and the next one. And uh, the next one is. And the next one is a deduction here. No matter which one which one teaching strategy you choose. And we have to consider two main parts, two main parts. The first one, induction and deduction. The first one here. Induction means uh, we should uh, obtain a general role from many individual cases, from uh, many specific uh, materials to get to conclude, conclude, uh, to conclude a general role, a uh, general law, uh, general knowledge. And uh, on the contrary, is the deduction. Deduction and uh, we just get some specific uh, uh, specific uh, materials or uh, specific results yeah, from uh, the top uh, 
from the top level or from the general principle. Yeah, so they are yeah, different uh, yeah, opposites here, okay? Yeah, opposites. Yeah, it's a 3B, okay? And that's uh, yeah, step three. Step three is selection of teaching media. Okay, because uh, we, it's uh, yeah, based on distance uh, learning. So we have to select teaching media and we have many, many choices. But, uh, and how to choose? We should be best on some principles. Yeah, some yeah, some principles here. Uh, yes, uh, the first one is whether some learning requirements require specific media. And we we shouldn't uh, pursue pursue the the opera, the the latest, the very beautiful uh, teaching media. And I think it's uh, effective. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, we can choose the very, very easy one to to have us achieve our learning goal. It's okay. And the second one is which media are more access more accessible to students because of students in different regions or in different countries uh, because of different uh, economical level or different uh, internet. Internet and so we should consider this effect, uh, these factors. Okay, and the third one is the which media is the easier to use. So we can we should use the easiest. Yeah, yeah, such as the Zoom, yeah, Webex. Okay, <laughs> well, yeah, we are very familiar with that. Yeah, Zoom and uh, Webex. Okay, and uh, then so here are the teachers or trainers. Uh, proficient in using the media. Because we we teach or we instruct online, so we have to make sure our instructors, instructors have to be to be good at, at that. Or, or we cannot uh, perform our instruction. Uh, yeah, do you think so? Okay. And then can learn us over to use media because of uh, online, then they have to pay for or the fee, maybe, yes. Okay, it's about uh, 3C. Now coming to uh, step four. Yeah, step of, um, um, you know, I'm sorry, 3D, yeah, 3D. Plan the learning, yeah, plan learning spot here. Yeah, it's very, very yeah, specific. And the one, yeah, test ball, it lets you some more and most authoritative information. And the three, flexible courses and forms of learning. And uh, yeah, timeless, Timely study instruction and number five, timely effective feedback and evaluation on learners work and progress. And uh, we can choose our some. Uh, and of course, and uh, uh, yeah, which one do you choose? And of course, and you can add more. Yeah, add more. Yeah, add more based on three kinds of uh, learning yeah, spots, yeah, conditions. Okay, it's about yeah, step three. Now coming to yeah, step four. If come to 4A, develop or select instructional materials. Well, okay. Okay, Nick, I will rem yeah. remind you, you have 10 minutes left. <laughs> I'm okay. sorry. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I will speed up. Thank you. I will speed up. <laughs> Thank you. A reminder. Okay. By 4A, development of learning materials, also material copyright choice adaptation. Okay. So I don't think uh, there's a need to, to, yeah, to talk about more. Okay. Uh, we're familiar with that. And I come to for B, establish positive interactions. So here, uh, design, construct interactive learning activities. And uh, here, yeah, main activities. Insert thinking questions, exercise, learning activities, a complete some exam item. Okay, exam item, maybe different countries, the students have to do that. <laughs> and then after that, we can practice application, of course, and a topic discussion, record, repeat, uh, comparison. Yeah, that's a very useful ways for them to do positive interactions. Okay, that is the uh, for B. Okay, now let's uh, come to the next one. Okay, for C, a combined study guidance. Okay, yeah, yeah study guidance because and your yeah, students maybe uh, not everyone can understand the instructors. Uh, yeah, teachers so. They have to get uh, some materials and uh, the team, the planner, the curricular team have to combine some text, uh, 
some yeah, testable, some references materials for them to use uh, yeah, offline. Okay, we'll see now come to 5A, teaching training and trial. So here, before teaching and teacher have to have to attend some training, some training how to use, how to use the uh, media. Yes, how to use media and then. And the uh, teachers have to have to connect, yeah, connect. Okay, yes. And uh, okay, the five A. Mm -hmm. Teachers need to uh, participate in training and distance learning and uh, try teaching. Yeah, yeah, it means yeah, rehearsal. Yeah, rehearsal. Yeah, do some rehearsal here. Yeah, teachers. Uh, that's why it's the uh, conduct modification. Yeah, yeah, that means what? After instruction, teachers have to conduct modification, update, and evaluation about uh, your teaching. And uh, in some parts, we can consider here, uh, if uh, if our teaching objective uh, is, uh, is achieved, and the second one is, uh, how about in the teaching effective, effectiveness of a teaching, of a teaching, and then, uh, how about uh, the activities? How about uh, the, the activities? And uh, how about uh, is your PPT? If your PPT is very clear, and uh, how about the teaching time? Yeah, that's the uh, elements we have to consider. Okay, we have to yeah feedback. We have to do re reflection. Okay, means reflection here. Okay, it's a six A. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, there are totally six yeah, step here. And now I conclude in the figure. Okay, the number one plan, curriculum development team, and the learner, learner analysis, resource analysis, uh, instructional plan, instructional strategies, and teaching media, learning support, and then instructional materials, yeah, development, establish active interaction, combine learning guidance. And the last one is the teaching training and trial. Okay. Uh, I think uh, yeah, it's very useful, and we can we can refer some of them. Okay, now uh, and after that, and here there are uh, some general design principles. Yes, okay, principles here. Number one is the good structure. Okay, yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah, it aims at uh, your whole your whole yeah curriculum, and the second one is the curriculum learning objective. Okay. A small unit form. Number four, encourage students' participation. How to encourage your learners' participation. And number five, explanation. And, and uh, instructors uh, have to be patient with your students. You have to explain, maybe yeah, uh, maybe twice or three times or four times. Number six, re repeat it. Yeah, repeat. Number seven is the comprehensive. Yeah, so they make uh, them know. Number five, uh, motivational. Make them interested in your class. Number nine, diversity. You should have used diverse teaching strategies. And number 10 is uh, openness. Okay? You should be open and you can record your instruction and the students can, can watch again. Yeah, you can watch again, you can watch your recordings. Number 11, feedback. Yeah, don't forget to, uh, to get feedback from your learners. Okay? And then number 12 is continuous evaluation. Yeah, from the whole class, from the whole class, that um, we have to evaluate our our teaching teaching results and uh, all students' learning outcomes. So, uh, above, uh, I just uh, I just uh, uh, share uh, share with uh, uh, with everyone uh, my ideas and uh, my understandings about uh, curriculum uh, based on distance learning and. Um, um, and uh, I guess there are some, yeah, there are something maybe not clear. And uh, I would, uh, I would uh, appreciate uh, your comments. And please feel free to give me some some suggestions. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very thank much, you. Nick, for a very informative talk. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, guess lots of the question actually you have uh, already uh, have a question right now <laughs> from a yeah, teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But maybe yeah, we can discuss you. it later. On. Okay. Yeah. Now. Okay, we move to the second speech. Oh, before that, I would like to sum up a little bit. Uh, Bapak Ibu sebenarnya sudah diberikan 
um, apa slide show-nya ya powerpoint-nya ya. uh, di sini uh, uh-huh. termasuk yang dijelaskan oleh Bapak uh, Mr. Nick uh, ini mulai dari okay. tadi RPP kemudian ada pengembangan kurikulum analisis pembelajaran ini termasuk uh, karakteristik siswa Bapak Ibu bisa minta melalui angket misalnya untuk tanya anak-anak kita hari ini mau belajar apa nah seperti itu itu simpelnya seperti itu ya termasuk yang tadi dijelaskan oleh saudari ini ada ada uh, analisis sumber daya kurikulum termasuk LS, uh, learning supportnya itu bagaimana ada ada manajemennya akademik dan emosional nah ini yang harus di, dijelaskan termasuk selanjutnya slide-nya yaitu ada RPP itu yang uh, gimana untuk pembelajaran jarak jauh karena memang di era COVID seperti ini yang memang dilak, uh, dilaksanakan di semuanya yaitu uh, melaksanakan pembelajaran jarak jauh termasuk uh, prinsip-prinsip umum general yang harus dilaksanakan gitu ya uh, secara singkat nanti Bapak Ibu bisa tanya lebih lanjut kepada Nick uh, you can uh, apa uh, you can uh, ask a question to, to him ya yeah, oke okay. Thank you. Well, Thank well, you. well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now we move to the second speaker, Arik Paul. Are you there? Hello. Nick. Yeah. yeah. We talk oh, yeah, later yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> Discussion. Hello, Arik yeah, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Yes, okay. I am here. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, okay. I will give a brief Thank information you. about Arik Paul first. Mm hmm. Aripo is a lecturer at the Cross River State University, Nigeria, and now he is currently doing his PhD in Technical and Vocational Education in UTM, Malaysia. And he will be sharing to us about basic technology learning strategies in the COVID era for primary and preschool. Aripo, are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Okay. Yeah, If you're ready, I, you can start your presentation slide, maybe right now. I, I hope you can hear me very well. Yes, yes, we can hear you. All right, um, uh, I think uh, Eva will help me do the sharing of my slide and I okay. will be talking the slide from this point. Sharing slide, please. Okay, great. Now it's your turn. I will mute. Yeah, Nikki. Are we, <laughs> yeah, are we together? Hello, can you hear Hello? me? Hello, yes, yes, yes. All right, I think you can start uh, your presentation right now. Okay. Good, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank good you morning. for good morning. Uh, thank you for having me here with you today. Uh, first of all, before I start, let me thank the dean of the faculty of the host university for this program. Let me also thank the head of department and the entire university that has given us this opportunity today to assemble in this webinar, to be able to discuss issues that affect the educational system globally with an attempt to see how we can profile solution. It is that solution that is captured in the team, which is to revolutionize the educational system. I want to tell all of you, thank you. And to also use this opportunity to thank my colleagues who are academics globally who are participating in this webinar. Thank you very much. Uh, let me start by saying that the job I have to do today, I have a very few time. I will try to be a little bit more practical and direct. Uh, my assignment here today is to come and talk to the wall about how I feel or my knowledge about how technology, which is basic technology, can be taught to children in pre and primary school in this COVID-19 era. How are we going to teach it? That is to say that before I was even invited to come and talk on this topic. There has existed a way which we are familiar with that we have been using to teach in this era. Uh, let me say before I continue also that we have two major problems when it comes to education, two major problems. One problem, the first is the problem of what to teach identifying what to teach, 
The second major problem we have in education is the problem of how to teach what we have identified that it is necessary that we should teach. It is because of trying to find answer to these two questions, what to teach and how to teach, that a lot of researchers have come up with one model or the other, or one method or the other in which we can teach what we have identified to teach. For example, in teaching technology or in teaching generally, Bloom Tazanomi came out with a model. It is a three-step model. That three-step model talks about how to teach what we want to teach. First, by saying that in teaching what we want to teach, we should concentrate on developing three domains, the cognitive domain, the affective domain, and the psychomotor domain. Now, for those of us in technology, we will put it in the layman language to mean that education for us in technology is to develop the head, develop the mind, and develop the hand. And when you look at these three aspects of what Bloom Tazanomi is talking about, our emphasis, strong emphasis, greater percentage of our emphasis in technology education is on the psychomotor domain, which is on the motor domain, on what children can be able to use their hand to do. That is our emphasis. Now, on the other side, some other school of thoughts came up with various methods in which we can now teach what we want to teach. The method to apply to teach varies depending on the nature of the program. For us, we have our own method. For those in English language may have their own method. But if you look at whether the model from Bloom Tazanomi, or you look at the method that has been proposed by many persons to use to teach, you will discover that all of these methods uses one strategy. What is that strategy? It is the strategy that presents the teacher in front of the it's students. Yeah, in the lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? Are we, are we together? It is the yes, method. yes. Please mute. Hello? Are we together? Please mute. Yes, I'm sorry okay. for a technical mistake. <laughs> Just go okay. ahead, Arico. So can I go ahead? Yes, you yes, can go ahead. Look at whether the method, look at it from the method that we should use to teach, or you look at it from the angle of how we should teach what we want to teach, you will discover that all of this method brings us in the classroom in front of the students. And this has been the traditional way of teaching that we are familiar with. And um, if you look at when we want to define what we want to teach, we try to see how we can solve the need of the society. But if we want to teach what we have so designed to teach in the curriculum, we try to take into cognizance the group, which is the subject that is the student that we are about to teach. We bring and take into cognizance the nature of what we want to teach. And we bring and take into cognizance the demand of the society. If you look at it and you can- as it is at the moment, we are on a crossroad where what the society need, the school cannot offer. And it is because we cannot offer what the society need, that is the reason why we jumped into the crisis where schools are shut down. Now that a lot of people are trying to open, we are contemplating how do we open in order for us to now teach what we want to teach. Please, can you take us to the next slide? Haven't laid that background yet. Yeah, give me the next slide. Haven't laid that background. Let me start by trying to, I know that I am talking to uh, people who may not, the greater percentage of my audience may not be technology students or science students. And I feel that um, it is necessary. I know that uh, in the primary school level, you can teach all subjects, even if it is not what you study in school. It is on that note that I feel that I should define and explain certain terms so that my, 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 my students, my audience can understand. First of all, what is technology? Technology is the application of scientific knowledge 
to design objects. This object could be equipment, it could be machineries, it could be structure, and operates and the ability to operate the same equipment under specific operating condition. Now, what I have there on this slide is very long, but I have just given the summary just for the sake of time. Now, the person who is knowledgeable in the practice. Kasih hitam di atas putih jadi anak-anak tak kasihan. Who is knowledgeable in the art and practice of technology is called a technologist. The word technologist is often used interchangeably with engineering. Now, to become a technology or an engineer, one need a sound background in mathematics and physics. Remember, we have defined we defined earlier technology to mean the application of scientific knowledge. So that scientific knowledge has to do with mathematics and the knowledge of physics. Please give us the next slide. Next. All right, what is basic technology? <clears throat> According to the Nigerian uh, National Policy on Education 2023, 2013, it defines basic technology as the study of technology and related sciences for the acquisition of practical skill, attitude, understanding, knowledge relating to occupation in various sectors of the economy and social life. Move, next slide. Now, why should children study basic technology? Why is it important? At this level, it is to lay a sound basic scientific, critical and reflective thinking in the heart of the students. Two, to develop the mind of the child to adapt to the changing environment. Uh, the environment changes every now and then. So the student needs to flow in that trend of event of change. Now to develop the children attitude and innovative mind to prepare their mind and four, to provide opportunity for the child to develop life manipulating skill that will enable the child function effectively in the society within the limits of the capability of the child. Next. Now, when children are given the opportunity to study technology at the early stage, what do they end up to become? They can end up to become designers. They can end up to become inventors. They can end up to become innovators. Now, the knowledge in technology enables someone to be able to do things that make the world worthwhile. Of course, we have seen it. It is technology that drives the world. Without technology, there will be no world. Today, we are talking through this virtual means by the help of technology. Therefore, the type, the manner and the type of training that or education that the student gets will play a very major role in developing their technical abilities. Next. Next. Okay, now what is the COVID era? The COVID-19 era is the period of the coronavirus disease uh, outbreak. The time within which there is no remedy for the pandemic. The time of the outbreak and the period in which the world is still struggling to have a remedy, to have a solution to the outbreak. Under this condition, what and what are we expected to do? Of course, we have the preventive measures that are lined up first that we must clean our hands. We must observe social distancing of 1.5 um, uh, 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 meter per person, wear face masks and all of that. Now, why I brought this in is that when we begin to put on face masks, I have seen a situation where people put on face masks to cover their nose and their mouth. The essence of the face masks is to prevent droplets that may come out from their mouth. But when they are about to talk, 
there is no way possible it can be very, very go smoothly for teachers to cover the amount while talking. We can run into a situation where somebody in an attempt to want to breathe or an attempt to want to talk clearly will try to pull down the max. And as a result, he will be forced to talk and droplet from his mouth may be forced to come out. Therefore, we may be successful in keeping these uh, 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 measures in the theory, but when it comes to practice, it may be difficult to keep it in practice. And also to wear, keep other measures in practice, especially when it comes to teaching practical skills that has to do with hand-on activities. Now go to the next slide. All right, what in the midst of all these challenges that we are faced, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, it exposes us or it reveals certain inadequacies to us. First is that we seem not to have the teaching and learning uh, structure put in place apart from, apart from the traditional face-to-face -face approach that we are familiar with. That is, we seem not to have contemplated or have any other teaching strategy that is put in place apart from the face-to-face. -face. We can see that when the outbreak came, we have to close schools. We hurry to close schools up till date. We are still locked down. People cannot go to school. If we have an alternative way of reaching out, of continuing school, we would have just switched to that alternative way. So the COVID-19 pandemic has exposed the fact that we seem not to have an alternative. Number two, if we did have an alternative, as some people claim, the pandemic has exposed or revealed the fact that we are not prepared for that alternative as at when the pandemic came. Number three, we, since we do not have the facility in place for online teaching, if we are aware of a strategy to use in teaching basic technology, to use in teaching generally, we wouldn't have short schools. We wouldn't have closed down everywhere. We would have just moved away from the face-to-face -face and moved to the alternative method. Maybe we know of the method, but we do not have the facility in place. Now, at this time, what do we do? Move to the next slide. All right, now, what do we do now to remedy the situation? Online teaching and learning is the option at the moment. At the moment, if we must teach uh, technology, uh, basic technology, under this current crisis, we will be left with no option than to switch into the online mode of teaching, which is the alternative at our hand. Whatever method that we decide, strategy that we decide to use, first of all, we must first of all return back to a strategy or a method that will bring back the class. Now, one, the online teaching and learning is education that takes place through the internet. Sometimes it is referred to as distance learning. In fact, it is the type of learning that best describes the current system that we are in. Online learning, too, is just one type of distance learning. We have various other types of distance learning. We could use that. Now, the distance learning is used to describe learning that takes place from across uh, uh, distances. Uh, it best suits this crisis in a time where we can no longer meet, in a time where even if we will have to meet, we will have to observe some protocol observe some distance, uh, put on some gadgets. Some teachers may not even be comfortable with that gadget. The students may also not be comfortable with the use of those gadgets. And as a result, they may evaluate the, the, the principle of using those gadgets. And it may turn out to mean that we never used any gadget at all. So at a time like this, it is the online teaching that permits people to stay at a distance just as the way we are and we 
do the teaching. Move to the next slide. Next. All right, how can online teaching and learning be conducted for children? How can we conduct it to teach students basic technology? How do we use it? Through the telemeans, where content is delivered through radio or television broadcast. Uh, the teacher, like what I am studying in my PhD is to develop, when we talked about the Bloom's taxonomy of education, which looked at the three domains, uh, the affective, the cognitive, and the psychomotor. Uh, that uh, model is very beautiful. But what uh, Bloom did not do, or what I, many people have not done, is that uh, if you now say that when we want to define educational objective, we should take into cognizance the three domains, but you did not go further to tell us how we should now teach each of these domains to achieve each of these domains. For example, there is no model that is put in place on how you can now teach understanding, how you can follow to teach for students to get understanding. There is no model that is put in place on how to teach affective. There is no model that is put in place on how to teach the psychomotor, but we were told that we should take into cognizance these three domains. So what I am doing in PhD is to see how I can develop a model that will guide teachers of technology on how to teach practical skill. If you are not teaching this motor skill, how do you teach it? Now, the teachers at primary school level could bring those strategies, use those strategies in teaching some basic technological concepts, put it into the radio, and the students stay at the other end and receive the lesson. It could even be in a video, a visual form, put it into the visual form, and the students stay at the other end and get the lesson on how it can be done. Now, we could also record what we want to do in a disk, in a CD-ROM, and send it to our students after we have taken time to do the teaching and we send it to students in this COVID-19 era for them to go through, study through, as though they are face-to-face -face with the teacher receiving the lesson. The third one is to get this learning process through the mobile learning by means of the cell phone. And of course, that is the option that we are left with at the moment. Because at the moment, the face-to-face -face contact may not work. Every strategy, every plan that we have in delivering, remember, when we talk about um, basic technology, it is the development of practical skill. Uh, when we talk about practical skill, it is an on an on activity. It is an on on activity. Now, and on activities, you are expected to use your hand in performing these activities. And we are in an era where, in fact, if the teacher must even teach technology, we teach it different from the way other subjects, other courses are taught. You may even teach it without even having to touch any object with your hand. You stay at a distance and you do the talking. But this may not be too applicable when it comes to teaching and on activities where you have to demonstrate with the hand, the student has to demonstrate with the hand, they have to touch the equipment. At fact, at some point, they have to pass one equipment to where they even have to work as a team to do a particular job. There is just no way we can put the student at 1.5 distance and allow them get it done. Please give me the next slide. Now, we are, uh, when we now subscribe to the online teaching, uh, just like as I said in the earlier slide, we will need to have some gadgets, some equipment that we can use, both the teacher and the student to facilitate the learning. First of all, we need a phone. Uh, in some cases, we need the laptop, the student must have, the teacher must have. Uh, we need in some other uh, time, we need the radio sets especially where the teacher had to make uh, an oral uh, teaching and pass instructions and send it to the students. They need an oral 
uh, means to get that audio message, which is the radio. And we also need the television in most cases to transmit this learning in this era. Next slide. All right, now we can not rule away the fact that in doing all of this, we will definitely come across challenges. Yeah, challenges of online teaching and learning of basic technology. What are the challenges? We want to look at the challenges first at the angle or from the student perspective. And we will be looking at the challenges from the teacher's perspective. And we will also look at the challenges from the institutional institution, that is the institutional perspective. Now on the aspects or from the student angle, it is possible that at the time we want to switch into this online means in teaching technology, we could have issue like technical issues, uh, which is the problem of not having strong internet connection. Uh, that is one. And the problem of not having internet connection at all, not having internet connection at all uh, is another problem. Now, the facilities issue, if we have the internet connection, we may have the internet connection, we may have a strong internet connection, but sometimes it is possible. We are discussing this matter as it affects the globe. It is possible that a greater percentage of people in the world, greater percentage of children may not have access to facility to connect to online learning whereby they can be taught basic skills through that means. Uh, that is that. Then adaptability issue. If we have all of this, the problem of adaptability, we are so used to the face-to-face, F2F method of teaching, where the teacher stands in the class before the people and he teaches. Now, to move away from that method to another method is bringing in a change. People fear change. And because of that fear they have for change, it could affect the initial move, switch over from the traditional known method to a new method. Uh, another problem we will have, which is a challenge on the student aspect, is the problem of uh, computer knowledgeability. Most uh, children, let me also say, including most children, are not computer literate. They are not computer literate. Uh, most of them cannot even operate the phone. And of course, uh, to so many, uh, the extent to which they even use this computer is different when it comes to using the computer as a form of classroom where they can receive lessons. Now, the second aspect is the instructors or the teacher perspective. If we are looking at it, what are the challenges we are definitely going to have if we switch over to the available method that is before us in this era. We will have, that is from the teacher, we will have proficiency in computer. Uh, most of the teachers do not have internet uh, tool knowledge. They do not have internet tool knowledge. Uh, some are familiar with the use of computer, but when it comes to connecting one or two uh, gadgets and switching over in order to borrow other gadgets, together with the computer system to use, they may have this problem. So it becomes a challenge. Then the problem of student engagement. Uh, student engagement refers to the degree of attention and interest students show when they are learning. Now you can agree that uh, during the face-to-face -face contact, it is possible to look at a student who is not paying attention and you call the student by name and say, Eva, you are not giving attention and Eva will look But We have a situation here, when we switch to online learning, where we may run into the problem of getting the students to pay attention. And of course, uh, from most of the uh, webinar I have attended through Zoom or, or WebEx that I have attended, I have observed a situation where you will have 80 people in attendance, but when you view, you will discover out of that 80, uh, a certain number are not there. And for some who will not just want to log out, not to show that they are not there, they will just get an image, get a picture of theirs and put, and you will discover that throughout the period of that uh, seminar, 
that image is just uh, like a statue. It does not talk, it does not shake. Uh, so that is likely going to be a challenge that the teachers will face if we cross over to online, a situation where we may not be able to get the attention. Sometimes some person may even be on, but is busy doing some other thing that the teacher may not even see at the time. And at the end of the day, we will think we have taught 100 students only to discover it were only 10 people that really paid attention. So from the teacher angle, it will be difficult to get student engagement, unlike the face-to-face. -face. Uh, another problem that teachers are definitely going to encounter is the problem of measuring outcome. How do you get feedback? Uh, in the model I am designing at the last stage of that model, and of course, when you uh, design instructional objective, which is performance objective, at the end, there are things you expect the student to know. And at the end of the lesson, you try to do some evaluation. In that evaluation, you try to find out if what you plan to achieve has been achieved. Now, when we teach practical skills, when we teach basic technology, uh, the last stage of it is when you ask the student to design a computer and they start the designing of the computer. At the end of the day, you should be able to get feedback that this is what they have done. So teachers are definitely going to have challenge in getting feedback of what the students have done. Then the next one is the challenge that we may likely have from the institution, uh, which is the organization. It could be the school, it could be the university. In this case, the school. Now it is the lack of teaching and learning facility for students. Uh, and of course, I have stated in the slide earlier that one reason why we do not immediately switch over to an alternative way of teaching could be, or is majorly because we do not have the facility on ground, or we are not aware, the team caught us unaware and we didn't have the facility on ground. So most schools, it is at this point that a lot of schools are trying to see if they can bring- <laughs> It is also at this time that we have even beginning to make use and utilize a software that can bring us together like this, which is the Zoom, the WebEx, and many other software because we are in a crisis. All right, give me the next slide. Hello, Eric Paul. You have five minutes left. I, I remind okay. you again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What are, what are the benefits? I will rush over this. What are the benefits of online teaching? Uh, first, 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 it increased student to teacher. It increased student to teacher and student to student interaction and discussion. If we apply it very well, we can have uh, so many students that even a single classroom cannot contain. We will have them under this kind of platform. It enhanced learning. Yes, number four, it is convenience. At any time, look at the time we wake up and we are having this lecture by eight o'clock in Indonesia, nine o'clock here in Malaysia. We could even decide to wake up and have our lesson at six, early at six o'clock. So it eliminates stress of uh, preparation to attend a lesson. Give me the next slide. All right, this is the conclusion. Uh, we have established, or I have established here, that if we must teach in this COVID-19 era, basic technology, which has to do with hand-on activity, if we must teach it very, very well, there is no way we will continue to rely on the face-to-face -face method in order not to contact the virus. We will have to resort back to the online method of teaching, which enable people at distances to receive lessons. And I have also said that uh, the online method in teaching basic technology is just an alternative. It is an alternative. It does not really solve the problem of teaching psychomotor skill because in psychomotor skill, it has to be the face-to-face -face method is the best method of teaching. We cannot subscribe to that, but at the moment when we are teaching children, we can, adopt this method. But if we move away from children and we want to teach adults, 
We just cannot put things in video. We just cannot talk virtually and send it to people and claim that they have gotten the technical knowledge. We must do it in the lab. It must be all involving. We will bring the equipment for them to see. We will know, teach them what equipment to use and at what time and what tool is necessary and what we need to produce. So that is the best way that we can teach practical skills. But for the COVID-19 era, the best method to use is the distance learning, which is through the online. Thank you very much for giving me attention. Uh, thank you for this um, uh, opportunity. Okay. Uh, God bless us. Okay, thank you very much, Alec, for that. It was a very informative talk, everyone. And I would like to sum up a little bit because Eric Paul has already uh, talked everything about uh, strategies, especially in online learning in COVID era. Um, intinya Bapak Ibu, di sini sebenarnya banyak sekali, terutama yang di slide awal tadi, karena memang kalau kita ngomong mengajar itu berarti membakar hati, tang uh, ibaratnya kognitif uh, uh, afektif si komotor ya, hati, tangan, dan pikiran, heart, head, hand, and mind. Jadi di sini bagaimana sih cara membangun ketertarikan di teknologi, termasuk ada batasannya. Di sini tadi sudah banyak sekali yang tanya uh, terkait dengan keterbatasan teknologi, karena era online ini sebagai salah satu solusi di era COVID-19. And um, seperti TVRI ada acara broadcast itu ya waktu itu uh, kemudian ada ini room atau mobile ini banyak yang sudah dibagikan di slide nya bapak ibu termasuk um, uh, intinya pada di era covid ini memang sebenarnya online learning sebagai salah satu upaya yang solutif tetapi juga memang ada keterbatasan termasuk yang dijelaskan di kesimpulan terakhir tadi. Uh, Mr. Arif pun menjelaskan bahwa memang better untuk face to face terutama untuk keterampilan atau psikomotor karena harus keterlibatan siswa di dalam lab tapi nanti kita diskus lebih lanjut uh, is it better or not kira ya oke okay. well well thank you Ariko thank you again for sharing your informative talk um, I will remind you again if you want to ask something actually we we've just already received six questions actually via uh, chat actually you can also uh, write your question at the YouTube live channel next now we are connecting to the Speaker, Miss Nilu Sakina. Hello, are you there? Miss Nilu. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, I can hear you. I will talk a little bit about her background. Now, actually, Mrs. Nilu Sakina Nuraini is a lecturer at the Primary School Teacher Education in Universitas Negeri Malang. And she will be talking about collaborative learning between school, parents, children in COVID era. Are you ready, Miss? Okay. okay, now it's your turn. Okay, thank you very much, Selvi. And Eva, can you help me to share my screen? Okay, so, yeah. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hope you are still here with me. I'm so excited, excited to be here. Now, I will continue this session with my presentation about collaborative learning between school, parents, and children in COVID era. Then, let's begin with the first slide. Okay. Did you ever heard Ingar Sosong Tulodo in Madio Mangun Karto Tuguri Handayani? This Japanese proverb is famously mentioned by the father of national education in Indonesia, Ki Hajar Dewantara. You can read the meaning of that pro proverb in my slide. But besides the proverb, there is a term that popular popularized by him. It is three educational center. It states that education takes place in three environments, both in family, school, and community. The first two environments mentioned before were very related to this topic. First, the family, okay, next slide, please. Parents play a central role in a family, an institution that begins before birth and continues also after birth in human life and continues its existence throughout the entire life. Educational feature of the family is an important factor that plays a role in shaping the future of a child's life. The function of schools and other institutions on the subject 
comes after the family and it has the quality of supporting and complementary for the family because no institution can give love, trust, confidence, morale, and warm family environment that are necessary for child development as much as the family. Parents are required to have the features that enable them to recognize and analyze their children's potential better in order to support their children's success in school and prepare them for the life in a qualified educational environment. So undoubtedly, parents are the ones who know their children best. Okay, next session, next slide, please. Okay, I'm sorry. The second environment I mentioned before is school. School is certainly act as a transmitter of knowledge and academic skill like reading, writing, and arithmetic, but they also serve other function in our society as well. And this can be categorized as manifest. The manifest function of school is a function that people believe is the obvious purpose of school and education. Manifest function of education are those that are intended and that most people think about. For example, in elementary school, parents expect their children not only to learn new information, but also how to get along with other children and begin to understand how society works. So two of the most significant manifest function of schools beyond teaching subject knowledge are socialization and the transmission of cultural norms and values. As we know, teaching and learning process in the classroom bring the idea of collaborative learning between the students and the teachers. Okay, next. Okay, when we talk about collaborative learning, this model has been teaching children how to collaborate and creating a variety of learning experiences which enable them to collaborate. It's not only an excellent way to develop a dynamic and a fluid classroom, but it also builds confidence in children as a learners. Then by creating a collaborative learning, children learn to rely on a range of children in the class, not just their close friends or the teachers. They are learning a skill in school that will be useful to them in later life. That is collaboration, which is very empowering and motivating for the children. Okay, next Eva. Now, teachers in schools have had distinct and separate roles, although many have knowledge that there is overlap roles that exist. For example, teacher may operate simultaneously as a teacher, as an administrator, as a counselor, disciplinarian, and they show the parental figure at school, although their expertise may be only in one specific area. Next slide, please. The collaboration between parents and teachers have been very useful for children development at school. To connecting the family and school, parents can give very useful information to the teacher. Even by cooperating in solving the problem arise, they can work together. Thus, parents may have information about how teachers should behave against their children. This healthy interaction established by teacher with parents, with this collaboration, child-related problems encountered can be solved more easily. Okay, to eliminate the features that may affect parent-school interaction, many methods have been done so far. Next slide, please. Okay, we can see that meetings can be made, maybe in individual interview, classroom parent teaching teacher meetings in every month or every semester, school parent meetings in every year, special group meeting uh, is a group formed by parents uh, of the students. Maybe in Indonesia we call it Paguyupan, for example. And the written materials can be improved, such as books, school magazine, school newsletter, and even some parenting seminars, home visits, family counseling services, and many more. But during the pandemic, this kind of collaboration cannot be made as it used to be. 
even the learning process in the classroom. The next, okay, thank you. That's why the shifting on the learning in the classroom into learning at home happening right now. Globally, 1.6 billion children and youth to be out of school temporarily in 161 countries. In Indonesia, over 60 million students are temporarily out of school due to COVID-19. It has been done as the health protocol to prevent the virus spread through educational services. Nowadays, these services are mostly done by optimizing the use of information and communication technologies that are widely used. Nowadays, most of the individuals have mobile devices and internet connection. School administrators, teachers, parents, and students can increase communication through mobile technology. This method of flexibility, those collaborative learning methods can be done anytime and anywhere. Okay, next slide, please, Eva. Yeah, with the current situation that mostly children learn at home, this collaborative learning should be happen not only for children with their students and or their teachers, but also the parents. With the help of mobile devices or social networking sites by messaging application, by maybe with the use of WhatsApp or Telegram or sharing the school information through Facebook, Instagram, blogs, and many more. School can organize many events that parents are in need, and especially about increasing parent-school collaboration to support learning continuing happen at home. The collaboration between school, students, teachers, reflect in teaching and learning process through online learning by using learning management system, virtual conference, group chat, educational TV program, and many more. Well, at home, parent-child communication become more intense than ever because of this condition. It can be seen as a chance for parents to get to know their child better. With a complete 24 hours interaction at home, parents can know how their children act while learning how they react to the new situation. And the school can maintain the collaboration with parents in this situation by organizing events for parents that support them while accompany their children to study at home, such as parenting webinar, or maybe send some written materials about learning activity that can be done during the pandemic. Okay, next slide, please. But as the other speaker say what Mr. Arik posted, the Nick said that this condition is clearly not easy. The use of technology, the online learning that has been chosen for the alternative learning during this pandemic practically have many challenges. Now you can see from the data, the data show in January 2020 over 200 and 72.1 million people in Indonesia, there was only 175.4 million or 64% that used the internet. That's why the concern for the 36% of the country that should have facility to support children learning from home when they have no internet connection is uh, become very serious problem. In Indonesia, the Ministry of Education and Culture broadcast education TV program called Belajar Dari Rumah in TVRI network, and they also support the material for teachers, maybe in YouTube channel Rumah Belajar by Kemdikbud, and even some teachers in remote area come to their students' house to deliver the subject material. It's completely not easy, but we should note that the closure of the schools doesn't mean the learning also stops. Okay, next slide, please. Another challenge is the condition that the parents need to work from home. 
and maybe some of them also a teacher. They have to do the housework. They have to accompany their child to study at home. And this condition already met most of the parents feeling emotionally exhausted. Child also feel the same way they learn with other friends every day, but no, they have to learn by themselves. It makes them sad, get bored, and even easily get stressed in this condition. Not only for parents, teacher also face something they never thought before, the online learning. When they never been engaged with mobile or online learning, they're supposed to learn and do something new for the classroom. It should be easier to do it with the peer collaboration at school because not every teacher had enough ability to deal with the online learning. These challenges is happen in our daily activity right now. And to encounter these challenges, we need to have the trick. Okay, Eva, please the next slide. Yeah, so first of all, everybody, please make yourself ready to start the day. Even by a glass of coffee, maybe 15 minutes of yoga, 30 minutes of joking, have a healthy meal, breakfast, or doing another activity that relaxes your body. It will make you, yourself, ready to start the day. And second, you have to know your time power because time power here means the right time to accomplish your daily activity. When you have to do as a parent, when you have to do your work as an employee, where you have to be a teacher for your child, arrange the schedule and communicate it with everyone around you, especially the child. Then we have to adjust our expectation because many things have been changed during this pandemic. As a parent, focus on improving students' ability, sorry, our child ability beside their intellectual knowledge. For example, how they learn to be a self learner, how their character, what about their potential. And as a teacher, maybe the teacher can give the students the essential topic for learning as the Ministry of Education in Indonesia always says, the focus now is not the mastery learning of the curriculum. So, adjust the schedule and learning activity based on the student's condition or par parents' advice. Because the parents are the ones who know best for their children. And it can be done by making some reflection journal every week. Parents can make a reflection journal and send it to the teacher on the weekend. The journal collects information about the benefit and the difficulty of learning at home for the children in a week. Collaborate with parents and children to make it happen. Try to know what the children or parents suggest for next week learning or what interesting lesson learned the children get from that week learning. With this kind of activity, child can be more open to parents or teachers about the learning difficulties what they love or they have to learn and it can train child to be more disciplined at home. The last tips for me may be three C's. There are communication, commitment, and consistency. It is the important key to maintain the success of this collaboration. It can make easier to solve the problem arise in this condition. Of course, the point of the collaboration learning between school, teacher, parent and child here is to optimizing learning at home for the child. Okay, next slide, Eva. Then for summarizing my presentation, I would like to share a statement from Najila Sihab in some interview, the founder of Scholastical Indonesia that I translate here. There are times teachers do our role as parents at school and now it's our time to do the teacher's role in our home. Thank you, everyone. Okay, Selfie, I'll give it back to you. Okay, great. That was great. Very informative talk, I guess, yeah. Thank you all.
Um, I would like to sum up a little bit just to make sure that all of you uh, will gather the uh, right information right now. Yeah. Okay. Bunilo, uh, that I'm sorry for <laughs> Ariko and Nick. I use I'm using uh, Bahasa Indonesia right now. Okay. Um, Bapak Ibu, jadi tadi yang dijelaskan oleh Bunilo uh, sebenarnya sudah sudah sangat berbeda-beda. Mensum up apa yang sudah dijelaskan oleh saudari Nick dan juga Ariko ya. Um, di sini uh, Bunilo juga menekankan tentang pentingnya uh, kita uh, mendalami kembali uh, filsafah Ki Hajar Dewantoro, Ingat Sosung Kelodo, Ing Madya Mangun Karso, Tukuri Handayani. Nah, itu yang memang harus diterapkan. Karena guru itu tidak hanya sebagai as a teacher saja, sebagai pekerjaan, tetapi juga sebagai konselor, pengawas, pengelola, dan juga figur orang tua. Nah, ini yang penting Bapak-Ibu karena karena di sini ada shifting dari uh, apa ya belajar bergeser dari sekolah ke rumah menjadi layanan uh, ibaratnya uh, dari uh, sekolah ke rumah kan layan, layan, layanannya menjadi melalui teknologi seperti yang dijelaskan oleh Kodora kemarin penting adanya kerjasama dari guru dan parents kalau perlu dijelaskan material dulu bagaimana uh, apa bahannya di, uh, bahannya dahulu gitu ya sampai uh, mau bahasa Jawa saya ya. bahannya dahulu bagaimana menjelaskan kepada orang tua untuk bisa membelajarkan bersama dengan anaknya. Nah ini bagaimana manajemen waktu tadi juga sudah dijelaskan menyiapkan hari baik segelas kopi kalau bapak ibu suka pakai teh ya pakai teh gitu ya. Terus ekspektasinya yang sebelumnya tinggi bisa diturunkan atau yang yang bagaimana lah pokoknya diatur sendiri hatinya begitu. Jadi konsistensi komunikasi jurnal refleksi banyak sekali caranya termasuk di sini. Karena sudah waktunya bagi orang tua untuk menunjukkan peran sebagai guru untuk anak. Setelah guru menunjukkan peran sebagai orang tua di sekolah. Nah ini ya, ada quote yang agak bagus tadi ya. Yeah. Well, back again in English. Okay, thank you Nick, Arik Po, uh, Miss Nilo yeah. for interesting talks. Actually, Nilo, um, Nick, uh, yeah. Nick, Nick has already answered uh, some question. Yeah, I guess yeah, from yeah, chat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I, will, I will sum up. Uh, okay. Yeah, I will yeah. choose again for the question. Actually, uh, I've been uh, actually I've been read. Actually, there are four uh, big question theme. Actually, the first one is about difficult learning material in curriculum. Uh, somehow, if it if teacher does not teach it directly, uh, then our student will get a confusion. And how can we supposed to? Uh, what you call? How can we supposed to um, to fulfill our curriculum material? Who's gonna answer it first? Nick. Okay. 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 Yeah. Are you ready to answer it? Okay. In Bahasa Indonesia, yeah, so you, you cannot answer that. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, I've just translated. And, and your question is yeah yeah this one remember that some students do not understand about technology in math. How teacher can make creative and interactive learning material using technology and internet oh, and internet yeah. deals with uh, that condition. Mm -hmm. Even some students are confused how to join WhatsApp group. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. But okay. Maybe yeah, the first please. question. This first question about uh, even if it in curriculum there are lots of the difficult material that have to be teach to the student. How can we teach that directly if it is moved into uh, online learning. Actually, lots of the material is difficult to student, like um, algebra or everything like that, yeah. And the parents cannot cannot, uh, what's it, cannot follow that, maybe. In Bahasa Indonesia, actually, the question is in Bahasa, Bahasa Indonesia, and then I translate it to you. Uh, you got my question? OK. Well, maybe yeah, and uh, the situations in different countries are not the same, right? No. Okay, and you're in China and uh, uh, families. Okay, people, people, yeah, uh, most of the people use uh, your yeah, 4G, your yeah, internet, and uh, some of them use 5G. Yeah, such as I use 5G at my home now, so there's no problem of, of internet. And uh, and uh, people and uh, and I can say, in each family, there are many many mobile phones, and uh, and the students are not allowed to bring. Students are not allowed to bring mobile phones at school, okay. But uh, when students uh, go back home and they will pick up their mobile phone and play games, and of course, and my daughter, yeah, often is, yeah does that, so, yeah, and he will yeah take us up on the app and uh, yeah Apple and the mobile phones and mm -hmm. play computer yeah. games and of course and it has 
and she has a she has a watch uh a watch mobile phone and she often make friends with his uh, with a yeah, with her watch uh, mobile phones and uh, in China uh, students are very familiar with uh, WeChat and QQ doing the WeChat and and QQ and uh, uh, yeah as I can say they are they do better than parents because parents uh, yeah parents are, are very busy but students but uh, yeah children yeah I, uh, yeah I think they yeah they do much better than yeah than me so okay. I don't think it's a problem for them. For them not to use uh, yeah technology, yeah in China, but uh, there is a, a more big problem uh, because they are often addicted to playing computer games with uh, uh yeah with uh, mobile phones. Maybe maybe a mobile phone will just join one child, so that's the social problem. And uh, as parents, we should uh, uh, we should uh, supervise, we should uh, uh, manage the or oh, they will be destroyed by the mobile phones. I think uh, 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 one way to take the advantage of a mobile phone, uh, well, yeah, one way to take the advantage of uh, uh, internet or technology. And uh, on the other hand, we should, uh, uh, we should uh, uh, think about some uh, ways to uh, prevent them uh, from, uh, from using technology too much, okay? And uh, of course, and the uh, traditional way of teaching, and we can, uh, we can use a mixed uh, method, use use a mixed method uh, of uh, traditional and non-traditional ways. I think mm, it's a uh, it's okay. And uh, of course, in my teaching practice, I use a mixed uh, method of teaching. I think it's a uh, impact. Uh, it's a uh, practical, and I can I can make my teaching practice uh, effective. So and here, if 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 a, and how to make a creative and, and uh, interactive learning materials using technology and the internet, uh, okay, uh, that's a challengeable question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a challengeable question. And uh, how to how to connect uh, technology and uh, our traditional teaching and all called creative and interactive learning. Uh, can be used uh, in the traditional way and can be used in non-traditional classroom, I think. So how to connect them, how to put them in, in the in distance learning is very challengeable. It's very challengeable. Maybe it's a maybe it's a, a problem forever, forever. Yeah, because because uh, different uh, internet and, and uh, different technology we have to make make teachers and make ourselves and make students, uh, make students, and yeah, and how to say, uh, make the uh, follow, yeah, follow this yeah technology first, then, yeah? and uh, students should take uh, some knowledge, should use some knowledge from uh, educational psych uh, psychology, okay, knowledge, yeah, educational psychology. So if teachers uh, haven't got the knowledge about that, maybe. We will be confused. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then, um, well, Nick, I will uh, ask you again. Actually, what 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 do you mean about the traditional uh, one uh, when you say about technology mix? Okay. Yeah. Traditional is just uh, is a uh, yeah teachers uh, you know, perform or teachers in employment. Okay. Do you know employment? Teachers are lead. They yeah, lead lead the classroom to mm -hmm. go to go not. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, non-traditional is uh, your students centered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, traditional way of teaching is uh, oh. teacher centered. So, so we should be clear about that. Okay, so okay. I think, yeah. You, what Thank do you, you. think? <laughs> okay, <laughs> just continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, continue. Okay. I think. Uh, so because in China, okay, in China students are not allowed to bring mobile phones oh. in school, so. It's very limited for us to explore how to connect technology and uh, and uh, and the traditional teaching in school or in classroom. It's very challengeable. Um, okay. And uh, you know, the uh, college entrance examinations is uh, very very important, uh, and uh, there are many many yeah stakeholder yeah stakeholders okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and the schools pro pro yeah 
prohibit or prevent, okay? Yeah. Prevent students bring your mobile phone. But uh, in classroom, uh, we have an internet and uh, computer, and uh, the government are uh, trying some experiments with uh, with the apples. Do the apples okay? Yeah, apples. Yeah, laptop. Yeah, yeah, laptop. And uh, yeah, we will we will hand out to students. Uh, yeah, each students uh, each one okay. Oh, yeah. one by one. But one by uh, one. but uh, just uh, in some schools, in some oh. schools. Yeah, in some schools. Uh, yeah, they are they are doing experiments. They are doing experiment. So maybe after some years, and we can follow their follow their method, uh, follow their uh, models. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank, thank you, you, Nick. Yeah, thank uh, you. Thank you. I will move to the Eric Po first. Actually, you you've already talked about. Hello, Eric Po. Eric Po. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> you've already talked about the uh, COVID protocol. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Arik po, Arik po. What? Uh, I'm sorry. I, yeah. I... Yeah. It's okay, Nick. I will just make it a little bit. Uh, what's called? Enjoy. Okay. Enjoy. <laughs> enjoy moment for a discussion today. And um, yeah, Arik po. Actually, uh, how about in in Nigeria? In Nigeria, uh, actually, how about students there? If it is in a proto uh, COVID protocol, COVID nineteen pro protocol, how how it is uh, very challenging for teacher and student? Actually, how about the technology investment and everything like that? Uh, uh, in fact, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. As I talk, as I talk with you now in uh, Nigeria, using the Nigerian situation, uh, as you have just asked. Mm -hmm. As I talk with you, since the outbreak of the pandemic, yeah. schools in Nigerians have been closed. Yeah. And since that it's time exactly. up till now, since mm -hmm. then up till now, schools have remained closed. Uh, only few schools, especially those of uh, private uh, ownership, mm -hmm. only few schools have attempted to even use the online method. Mm -hmm trying to teach, uh, but it has not been completely successful. It has not been successful in that uh, because of the in-readiness to do that, uh, that method was only possible for teachers to use to teach English language and mathematics, English language and mathematics to children. So when it comes to other complex uh, subjects, uh, it has not been effective. And uh, when we judge in terms of percentage, 99.9% .9 of students since the outbreak of the pandemic are at home and are not receiving any lesson uh, because of one, as I stated earlier, our in preparedness for this uh, crisis to adapt to a new method, uh, mm -hmm. issue of having data is a problem. Hello, are, we, are you with me? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Arikpo? Oh, Arikpo is live. Oke, okay. jadi Bapak Ibu tadi sudah dijelaskan sedikit kalau di Cina, Nick sudah menceritakan kalau di Cina itu sebenarnya di, membawa HP itu tidak boleh, tapi sangat terbatas sekali, tetapi uh, ada juga eksperimennya tadi ya, uh, di beberapa sekolah itu yang memang satu siswa, satu laptop, one, one by one devices, jadi 101, jadi istilahnya seperti itu. Nah mungkin, mungkin ada tambahan dari Bu Niluh ya. Oke. Okay. Okay. Maybe you can just answer it in Bahasa Indonesia if you prefer yes. to, uh, yeah. 
to ask all of the questions. Okay. Uh, jadi untuk membantu Bu Selvi untuk menjelaskan jawabannya ya. Tadi sudah banyak dijelaskan oleh Nick dan Ariko juga. So, uh, memang kalau di Cina tidak ada masalah dengan teknologi karena internet koneksi di sana, maaf, koneksi internet di sana itu sangat bagus. Tapi uh, dan ketersediaan device-nya juga mencukupi sehingga memungkinkan sekali untuk melaksanakan pembelajaran online secara optimal. Tapi masalahnya ketika bicara di negara yang lain, kondisinya pasti akan jauh berbeda. Misalkan tadi Ariko menceritakan ke kita bahwa di Nigeria itu pembelajarannya berlangsung e, tidak mudah. Bahkan 60% siswa itu e, belajar, ti, e, bahkan tidak mendapatkan pelajaran sama sekali karena mereka memang tidak siap. Jadi tidak siap untuk e, pembelajaran online. Mungkin sama untuk beberapa kondisi yang kita temui di sekitar kita, Bapak Ibu. Jadi di Indonesia juga demikian. Pertanyaan yang menarik tadi, pertanyaan pertama yang disampaikan oleh Selvi tadi, jadi saya ingin memberikan bantuan jawaban terkait pertanyaan, kalau materinya sangat sulit dan tidak bisa dijelaskan hanya dengan pembelajaran online, itu bagaimana cara kita memberikan solusi terkait hal tersebut? Karena memang mau tidak mau, seperti yang diinstruksikan oleh Kemdikbud saat ini, bahwa sampai tahun ini, sampai akhir tahun ini, pembelajaran masih berlangsung secara online. Sehingga kita harus menyesuaikan kondisi tersebut dan sekali lagi Bapak Ibu, prinsipnya bukan pada kentutasan materi pada kurikulum, tapi prinsipnya adalah bahwa kita hanya perlu menyampaikan materi-materi esensial kepada siswa dalam dan membantu siswa untuk tetap belajar. Jadi eh, jangan sampai ketika sekolahnya tutup, siswanya kemudian tidak belajar, siswa kemudian melakukan aktivitas yang lain yang bahkan membahayakan mereka dari segi kesehatan. Misalnya nongkrong bersama begitu ini, karena itu mereka uh, malah bareng-bareng dengan temannya, nah, ya duduk di uh, tempat kopi begitu ya, dan kemudian mereka saling berdiskusi tentang itu, uh, apa maaf saling ngobrol berdiskusi tentang hal-hal lain di luar pembelajaran. Nah ini yang tidak kita harapkan, sehingga bagaimana Caranya sekali lagi kolaborasi antara sekolah, guru, orang tua, dan siswa itu sangat penting. Kalau di sekolah dasar saya yakin bentuk kolaborasi ini sangat mudah untuk kita terapkan karena bagaimanapun anak masih berada di bawah pengawasan orang tua. Tapi di sekolah menengah atau sekolah atau di universitas misalkan atau kampus hal seperti ini tidak mudah untuk dapat dilaksanakan karena pengawasan dari orang tua itu sudah berkurang daripada seharusnya. Nah ini Bagaimana cara kita memberikan materi-materi yang sulit tadi? Kuncinya ada pada pemilihan bahan ajar, Bapak-Ibu. Jadi sebenarnya dengan pembelajaran online, Bapak-Ibu itu bisa men-share atau membagikan materi-materi yang telah Bapak-Ibu siapkan. Mungkin Bapak-Ibu bisa membuat video bahan pembelajaran, Bapak-Ibu bisa mempersiapkan modul. Kalau pembelajaran online masih bisa berlangsung, maka eh, bagikanlah materi-materi tadi secara online. Tapi kalau pembelajaran online tidak bisa berlangsung, maka Bapak-Ibu bisa membagikan materi-materi tadi secara offline. Mungkin sekali dalam satu minggu Bapak-Ibu meminta wali murid untuk datang ke sekolah untuk mengambil materi-materi aja tadi dalam bentuk handbook, dalam bentuk modul yang sengaja dicetak oleh sekolah. Karena saat ini memang pembiayaan pendidikan, jadi dana-dana bos itu kan arahnya dialihkan kepada keperluan sekolah dalam rangka mengatasi pandemi. Dan sekolah itu kalau dalam pembuatan bahan ajarnya Bapak-Ibu, video-videonya, saya tidak menyebutkan TV apa ya channel TVRI, ya selain dari channel TVRI yang disiapkan oleh Kemdikbud, Bapak-Ibu di sekolah bisa mempersiapkan bahan ajar sendiri, bahan ajar secara mandiri di sekolah, karena sekolah itu sebenarnya punya studio yang langsung bisa Bapak-Ibu gunakan, kelas. Ada papan tulis, Bapak Ibu tinggal direkam di sana tentang menjelaskan materi tersebut. Bagaimana cara evaluasinya? Bagaimana cara tahu kemampuan siswanya? Buat evaluasinya, Bapak Ibu. Dikumpulkan seminggu sekali. Dan sekali lagi kunyanya di sini adalah konsisten. Komitmen Bapak Ibu semua, konsistensi dalam melakukan semua itu, dan insya Allah hasilnya akan bisa Bapak Ibu lihat di akhir kondisi ini nanti. Memang tidak ada yang ideal, tidak ada yang paling bagus, tapi di antara semua hal yang buruk itu, pasti ada hal baik yang bisa kita lakukan. 
Mungkin itu tambahan dari saya, Selvi. Terima kasih. Great, great. Okay. Uh, actually, Miss Mrs. Nilu have already uh, answered uh, the first question about the difficulty uh, about difficult learning material in curriculum. So we, as a teacher and as a parent, uh, have to understand about the learning resources that we have to teach it. And if you are a teacher, you have to make sure that all the parents can follow you. Actually, even if uh, each week, uh, one once a week, so you can just uh, give it hand out to the parents. Uh, Nick and Ariko, are you back yeah, again? Sorry. I don't know okay. what happened. I don't oh, know yeah. what happened. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. But uh, Alhamdulillah, we are connecting again to you. Uh, to you. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, oh, I did not, can I you did continue not about your talk uh, before? Yeah, I did not know what happened and I just went off. So as I was saying, um, in fact, a uh, greater percentage up to 90 mm -hmm. something okay. point something percentage since the pandemic outbreak in Nigeria has been at home. Uh, students want to go to school, but there is just no way that they can go to school. Yeah. Uh, even though these children are familiar and over familiar with the traditional method of take their baths, wear their clothes, jump into the car and get to the school, see their friends face to face. Uh, but uh, they are also aware that with the crisis at hand that is of health and life and death uh, challenge. Uh, they are ready to sit back at home and receive lessons. But for now, as we talk, it is not possible, uh, which is the reason why this uh, uh, seminar is of very great essence. Uh, under this situation, we find ourselves, how can we solve the problem? It can be solved in case we are looking at the problem ending very soon and it does not end. Will we continue to keep students at home? No, students must go. We just have to look for a way out. It is not looking for a way out that I am proposing that it is the, for Nigerian, as I know, as a country and many other countries. It is for us to beef up the facilities that will encourage uh, this new method of teaching for parents and children to be able to be involved in the uh, online classes. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Ariko. And um, actually, uh, yeah, it is about a uh, uh, challenge, challenge that every, yeah, every word right now is, is happening right now. So we are now in the uh, technology engagement difficulties somehow in some countries, especially in some, uh, some part of the Indonesia, maybe. Yeah. And um, I would like to move into the, the other theme of the question. Actually, uh, right now is a new year. Actually, a lot of the students uh, are in the new year and we have a new student actually. Uh, how to understand our new student characteristics so we can uh, shift um, from off offline to online actually. We, we haven't met them yet, actually. We, they, are, uh, they are freshmen, <laughs> I mean. Yeah, actually, how, how can we, we learn about their characteristics? Okay, maybe uh, want to talk it first, it, Nick yeah. or Ariko? Yeah, it's okay. I think um, in my lecture, mm -hmm. I have uh, stated in the lecture that one of the greatest challenge that we will have at the moment concerning online lesson is our ability to get feedback. Yeah. Uh, when you are talking about characteristics, it is uh, a feedback of the character, the behavior of the children in the class that the teacher ought to get. This is uh, one of the advantages that the face-to-face -face interaction uh, give to the teacher, apart from just teaching to develop the student IQ. Yeah. As you look and you see the behavior, there are some certain strange behavior that could just pop up and the teacher take notes of that because when you talk about characteristics, you are talking about psychological construct. This kind of psychological construct could, can be observed. It is the character. You just observe it even while you are teaching about the child and you try to prove a solution. Now in this era, if we must return back to return to the online, if things did not change and we go back to online, remember the online is now going to be a collaboration kind like teaching between the teacher, the parent, and the, and, the, and the children. 
When it was face to face, the parent only assists at home to do assignments. But if we return back to this other method, the parent must sit beside the children to be able to take care of those salient area, those areas that, uh, that the teachers cannot see. For example, uh, when it comes to affective domain, when it comes to the affective domain, the teacher can raise questions, questions about characters that of children that is familiar and the one that is not too familiar. It is the parent who will assess those characteristics and return feedback to the teacher in form of a questionnaire. That is the only way the teacher can know those characteristics that pop up in the course of learning. Otherwise, you can't stay at a distance, just like as I am here. I can't stay here and just imagine that uh, you are having a headache as you are there. But if you have somebody by your side whom I give a form to assess, the person can be able to tell us your state of mind as at the time you are receiving that lecture, your behavior, your character, and all of that, and send it back to me. It can be useful to me when I want to make assessment. That is just the whole, uh, the one of the ways. Uh -huh. Maybe uh, that, that's, that's a great, uh, great idea. Maybe Nick, Nick, are you there with me? Hello, Nick? Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh -huh. and I think, it's yeah, about yeah. freshman, maybe. It's about COVID-19 protocol. How can you understand your student characteristic if you haven't met them yet? So about the freshman, uh, uh, there is a very good choice for us to choose. And uh, you can get some information based on the, based uh, on, yeah, on the, and how to say, and uh, yeah, senior. Yeah, senior students and uh, uh, the last, uh, the upper grade, I'm sorry, okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, sophomore, okay. Yeah, you can, yeah, yeah, you can use uh, yeah, sophomore's information. Sophomore's, uh, yeah, characteristic when they were, when they were freshmen and, and you can get some regular things and uh, can get uh, some loss. I think it's uh, yeah very useful yeah for us to uh, to to use and then and then yeah and of course and uh, yeah teachers will will know their their email email address and uh, their phone number and uh, they can send uh, messages and uh, can can do a, a questionnaire. I think it's okay. Yes, your yeah, questionnaire. Yeah, yeah, two choices. I think okay. Thank you. Okay, great, thank you. What's up, Indonesia? Maybe, Miss Nilo, you wanna answer uh, how to understand our new student, especially in the first grade, first grade, yeah, <laughs> your young kid, okay. Okay. Indonesia, uh, maybe, in Bahasa yeah, Indonesia. Yeah. yeah, I will help you. <laughs> Then, um, yeah, Bapak Ibu, jadi memang kalau kita melihat siswa baru, itu hal yang menarik ya. Jadi, saya melihat bagaimana persiapan sekolah-sekolah ini untuk mempersiapkan siswa untuk mengenal sekolah mereka, guru-gurunya. Jadi kalau dari pihak sekolah mungkin tidak terlalu sulit karena sekolah bisa menyediakan uh, satu video begitu untuk mengenalkan profil sekolah, profil gurunya, kemudian apa saja yang akan mereka pelajari, dan itu bisa diberikan kepada siswa atau kepada wali murid begitu, bisa melalui CD atau melalui uh, share link satu channel YouTube misalkan, itu tidak masalah. Jadi itu sangat mungkin, ada banyak platformnya, maaf, ada banyak cara yang bisa digunakan. Nah, tetapi dari sudut pandang siswa, dari sudut pandang siswa, bagaimana kemudian, uh, maaf, dari sudut pandang sebaliknya, bagaimana sekolah bisa mengenalkan, bisa mengenal diri siswa, siswa yang baru saja akan bergabung ke dalam sekolah, ini hal yang menantang ya. Mungkin tadi yang sudah saya sampaikan di dalam presentasi saya, ada hal yang saya sebut sebagai jurnal refleksi atau reflection journal, ini bisa menjadi salah satu alternatif bagi Bapak-Ibu untuk melihat uh, kemampuan sebenarnya dari, dari anak tersebut. Tuliskan segala hal yang ingin Bapak-Ibu ketahui tentang siswa tersebut. Minta bantuan kepada wali murid untuk mengirimkan jawaban-jawaban tadi. Misalkan jawaban pertanyaan singkat tentang apa ketertarikan, apa hal yang menarik bagi siswa dalam pembelajaran, apa hal yang tidak menarik bagi siswa dalam pembelajaran, bagaimana uh, siswa belajar dalam satu minggu ini, Kemudian hal-hal terkait apa kelebihan siswa, apa hal yang menjadi kesulitan siswa dalam belajar, hal-hal semacam itu akan menjadi 
uh, masukan bagi guru sehingga mengetahui oh sebenarnya siswa saya ini uh, uh, cenderung malas tapi dia punya kelebihan di sisi ini pembelajaran ini dia uh, punya kompetensi yang bagus dan sebagainya jadi memang tergantung pada bagaimana cara Bapak Ibu bisa menggali informasi tersebut. Bisa lewat siswanya langsung, kalau memungkinkan di sekolah menengah begitu ya. Tapi kalau tidak memungkinkan, misalkan di sekolah apa preschool, di PAUD, TK, kemudian di SD, Bapak Ibu bisa meminta informasi tersebut dari orang tua. Kalau memungkinkan Bapak Ibu, video perkenalan dari anak tersebut bisa dikirimkan ke dalam chat ya grup chat begitu sehingga bapak ibu bisa mengetahui tentang uh, bagaimana uh, sejak tampilan anak-anak saat memperkenalkan diri mereka bagaimana kepercayaan diri mereka dan itu akan menjadi informasi yang sangat penting bagi bapak ibu untuk menilai anak-anak secara afektif dan juga secara psikomotor mungkin itu tambahan dari saya Selvi terima kasih oke okay, great thank you all uh, maybe this is the last session Uh, Arifo, Nick, yeah. thank you for joining this webinar. This second session actually a lot of the information that you've been sharing to all of the participants right uh, already. Okay, that was great. And um, I would like to add some information actually, yeah, for all, all of the participants here and all of the YouTube uh, participants. Um, actually, yeah. Okay. This is uh, our conference that will be held in the October. Yeah, HP, Early Childhood and Primary Education. Uh, you can see here, okay. So actually our, uh, our, uh, our conference will be held in the uh, online, online conference and um, it will be published by Atlantis Press. So if you wanna good uh, publication, so you can join this conference, all of the participants, Bapak Ibu silahkan klik ecpe.pip.um.ac.id ya, tidak bosan-bosan, ini adalah gawe dua tahunan kami, jadi silahkan untuk uh, mengikuti konferensi ini uh, sebagai sarana untuk menambah wawasan bagaimana sih kita uh, uh, tema ini ya, Saving a Better Future for Young Generation, Innovation in Early Childhood and Primary Education in New Normal Era. Jadi inovasi apa sih yang akan terjadi di primary sama early childhood di New Normal Era. Oke, okay. well, back to me again, I guess, ya. Yeah. Um, Oke, okay. I think this is the end of the webinar. Nick, Ariko, and Miss Nilo, thank you for all your informative thoughts. I hope yeah, all of you. Thank you very you, yeah. much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. It was very uh, honorable to have you here uh, in, here, in this webinar. Oke, okay. ladies and gentlemen. Okay, may I uh, say thank you for joining this webinar. Uh, actually, this is the second session. You can also watch the third session in the 14th of July. Uh, I hope you enjoy the programs and we hope to see you again in the third webinar in today, I guess, yeah? Okay, I think this is the last. Wassalamualaikum and good morning, everyone. Have a good day. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everyone, Bye. thank you, Nick, Arikpo. Thank you. Great job. <laughs>